So some applications of refraction. First example, a refractive surface. Something like a fish bowl or a fish tank. Something like this, these plastic cubes that are floating around. <coughs> Let's look at a fish tank. you may have. It's coming in and reflecting off the fish. <coughs> Some of the light is coming, hitting the surface at a 90 degree, uh, normal to the surface. That would just exit the surface normally. It wouldn't be bent. If your angle is zero degrees, remember in Snell's law, the angle is measured relative to the normal so if your light ray is normal to the surface, perpendicular to the surface, that means theta is zero. Okay? Then nothing's going to happen. It's going to just continue on straight through. Some of the light going off at another angle. Well, since it's in air, sorry, in water, leading to air, it's going to give us a bigger angle than what it came in at. Turns out, as long as this glass surface is flat, the angle um, that's incident here versus the angle that's refracted here is going to be the same whether was, there was glass there or not. Because okay. if you do n1 sine theta 1 to n2 sine theta 2 in the glass, that gives you the same theta 1, the new theta 1, which ends up giving you the same angle as if glass wasn't even there. So we don't have to worry about the glass is what I'm trying to say. And that's true as long as it's flat there. So we have all these refracted light rays. Notice they're diverging. They're not going to cross. They're not going to come together. So similar to mirrors, when we had reflected light rays that weren't converging, <coughs> that were not coming together, we projected them backwards. So if I project this backwards, where they appear to cross, since I drew the lines coming from the nose, that's where the nose is going to appear to be. Not that fishies have noses. So there's our image. This is the image. This was the object. Now similarly to what we did with mirrors, the distance from the object to the surface is going to be the object distance, which we're going to call S. So we're still going to call object distance S. The distance from the image to the surface is still S prime. A negative S prime still means it's a virtual image. The difference now, is this image real or virtual? It's virtual. Virtual. The light rays are not physically coming back into the water and converging. This is a virtual image. The main difference between mirrors and refractive surfaces is that the virtual image with the refractive surface shows up on the same side as the object. So it's on the front, if you want to call the front where the object originates. That's the main difference. S prime still is going to be negative. Negative S prime still means it's a virtual image. Now the equations that relate these are a little bit different. We have to take into consideration the index of refraction. The equation looks like this.
N1 is the index of refraction where the object is located. So in the case of our fish tank here, the object is located in water, so N1 would be the index of refraction of water. N2 is the index of refraction where the observer is located. Well, we don't generally jump in the fish tank to go check out the fish. We're over here looking in the fish tank. Okay, so we're out in the air. So N2 will be the index of refraction of air. S is still <laughs> object distance, so it's the distance from the object to the surface. S prime is still image distance, so it's from the image to the surface. R is the radius of curvature of the surface. So it's how curvy that surface happens to be. If we're looking in a flat fish tank, then what's the radius of curvature? Not zero. It's infinitely large. You'd have to take a sphere that's infinitely large for any side of it to look perfectly flat. So what this does, if r is infinity, anything over infinity goes to zero, so we get n1 over s is equal to negative s, n2 over s prime. So s prime, the image distance, will be negative n2 s over n1. It's going to be a negative value, because it's, which means it's going to be a virtual image which means it shows up on the same side of the tank as the object actually is. Whenever you look in a fish tank, what you're seeing, all the fish or anything else you happen to be looking at in there, appear to be closer than they actually are. They appear to be closer to the surface. Okay? I don't know if you've ever noticed, you look in one side and then you go and look in another side and you can tell that the fish are further back than what you thought they were. So the fish or whatever you're looking at will happen to be cl look closer to whichever surface you are looking in from. Yes? If you look at them from underneath the level of the water and then move your eyes above the level of the water, it changes their position? Yes. What's the cause of that? So if you're looking from up here? Huh? It's on the person, sorry. Um, they'll still appear, for example, if they're actually right here. When the light hits, it refracts at a bigger angle. So to you, they appear to be closer to the surface. So they're up. So why does it change versus when you go down below the water? Because isn't either way the light going from water to air? Yeah. It just has to do with the way the light rays are bending versus, I mean, in either way, it's still closer than what it actually was. But your normal line is perpendicular. Yes, that one is. The normal line is uh, this, if you're looking from that side, right? right. It's that one. The normal line is this way versus this way. As long as the glass is equal thickness, it doesn't change anything. So it doesn't have an end for glass? It's not important. There is an end for glass, but it's not important if it's an equal thickness. 